Hello everyone, today we're going to be using Galaxy N16 to calculate PK. So a little bit of background before we get into things. Ka is known as the acid dissociation constant. It tells us the favorability of an acid dissociation reaction. So looking at, at this example on the left of hydrofluoric acid, we can already tell that something is off. This reaction doesn't go back and forth equally. And these types of reactions tend to favor either the products or the reactants. So larger values of Ka tell us that the product is favorable, while smaller numbers tell us that the reactant is favorable. What this indicates is stronger acids will tend to dissociate in solution. Quickly looking up the numbers, for this hydrofluoric acid example, we find it has a low pKa, telling us that it doesn't want to dissociate and it would much rather stay as hydrofluoric acid. Typically, when we consider computational pKa calculations, we refer to a thermodynamic cycle like this one, where we would first calculate the delta G in the gas phase and then calculate the delta G in the aqueous phase and use these values in combination with the equation uh, with the equations in the next slide to calculate our pKa. So here are all the equations laid out. Uh, what you will notice is that the proton already has a value associated with it because it cannot be calculated computationally due to its lack of electron. Uh, this method is used quite frequently in literature for very precise calculations. However, accurate values can still be acquired by using a simpler format, like this one. Here we are simply calculating the delta G for the solution of our acid and its ions. Again, in this we will be using the same value for the proton. So let's do an example together. This is lactic acid and its ions. We will be calculating it at room temperature with an optimization and a frequency job at the ground state level of DFT, along with a B3LYP 6-311G plus D, P methodology. Do note that for your own calculations, you will have to figure out what kind of methodology matches with the experimental data for the best. Finally, we're going to perform these calculations with the default solvent model, with water as our solvent. So go ahead and go try this calculation by yourself, and then we'll reconvene to compare our numbers. So I will just quickly take you through um, my input files. So on the left hand side, we've got lactic acid, and on the right hand side, we've got our single point energy calculation. So on the left, this is our optimization plus frequency calculation. You can see at the top we've got opt and freak, and then we specified our methodology, and then we used our solvent model. All of this is just geometry, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, and then over here, all we did was use the old checkpoint file from this calculation, and we... Um, just ran under a simple energy calculation. So if we look into the a log file for our energy here, uh, we just simply search for, um, I like to search for E open parenthesis, and that will normally take you right to the um, first SCF done which is the energy that we need. So this is the energy that I got for uh, lactic acid. And then you just do the same thing for your anion and you calculate your delta to that. Here are the uh, results of the calculation. As we can see on the bottom, the experimental pKa of this reaction is 3.86 and our computational data suggests that we have a slightly lower 
PKA with 3.48. This is well within the margin of error. Thanks again for watching, and if you like the content, please consider checking out the rest of the videos on our channel.